Entertainment and Sports Source. You are tuned in to Baltimore Flavor Radio. I am your man, Mr. Antoine. And to my left, Jay McGraw. Jay McGreezy. And in the middle, conspicuous by her absence. It's me. Oh, you just. <laughs> your girl, V. Welcome to Baltimore Flavor Radio, man. Um, tuning in a little bit late tonight. We had some some accidents, some traffic issues on the way. Yeah. Glad everybody is all right, man. And, and for once, it wasn't me though. Yeah. For once. <laughs> you be crashing like that? No. Oh. Remember, I used to be getting here because oh, of traffic. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's because you're coming from New York, uh, somewhere yeah. way down yonder. Sort of. We got an exciting show for you guys tonight, man. We have actually two. MC artist, we might have a dope little cipher at the end. We might have yeah. yeah, we might have a dope yeah. little cipher. And you got a lot. You got a poet, a singer slash rapper, yeah. and a rapper. Yeah. That's so we we might can we might good can, combination right yeah, there. We, we might end the show with a little. I might do my beatboxing. Might the, yeah. Or I can spit some bars, which whichever whichever y'all prefer. If you spit some bars, I'm running. Oh, no, you don't, don't run. <laughs> don't sleep on my skills, man. We got my man Poet Deep in the house with us, man. Joining us tonight is a, a, a hip hop artist that I didn't know. Like I told him, I thought he I thought he was a spoken word artist, but he's a hip hop artist um, yes, out of Baltimore. And we got my man Voice, Voice Daddy, uh, Voice man. Daddy Man, in the building with us, man. I, I gotta I gotta give you a compliment when you get on air, bro. And, and he bought actually a surprise guess what my man you're that black in the house we might yeah, have to that. get him out here to do some bars too man but um real quick just how was your week before we before we go oh you just gonna run to me that quick? yeah man oh my week yeah, was man. good man my week was I lovely do anything um i actually went to uh let's see i was at out back on friday the food was delicious man thanks for the invite <laughs> thanks for the invite what invite? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> my point exactly. <laughs> nah, man. Um, took my son to uh, the laser, the, the little arcade down at East Point. They was trying to throw us off, though. I had to flex on them a little bit. Like, wow. Yeah. Huh? Why were they trying to throw you up? Because it was time to close. Oh, well, yeah. That's usually what happens. <laughs> when, when it's closing time, that's usually what happens. It's time to close. <laughs> I was like, yeah, but I got, you know. He was like, "All right, I give you five more minutes." <laughs> thank, 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 thank. From their point of view, when you've been there, I've for been there. X amount of hours. And I've been there. You trying to go home? I used to work. But I always had that one person that always just like to just take that time. Right. Like that's, you ain't got nowhere and, to go. And that's where I was about to go because I used to, you know. And the, and the funny thing about it is when all of your coworkers are leaving, and you just sitting there like, "Yeah, we had a." <laughs> it's funny that you say we had a um. We had a, 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 a sip and paint at this uh, at this Italian restaurant, our White Marsh Mall. I think it's called Bopa de Peppos or something like that. Mm -hmm. And um, we we had one of the little private rooms, and it was 50 of us. We didn't know that the joint closed at 10 o'clock, man. And we was right. on straight CP time. So at about 10, 15, you saw all of the other employees. They had cleaned up their section <laughs> and was rolling out. And the two waiters and waitresses that we had were stuck there. We kept them there until about 12.30, man. That was crazy. Wow. Yeah. Shout out to everybody checking us out on Facebook Live. We're going to go ahead and get right into this, man. We're not going to play no games tonight. We ain't playing? No, nah, we're not playing no games. Hitting man. right off the top. Right off the top. My man, so Poet Deep. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In the building. Welcome to Baltimore Flavor Radio, man. Thank you. I appreciate uh, you for uh, having me. You can't uh, just give him that type. That wasn't, uh, that wasn't um, good. Okay. That was dry. Um, Say no enthusiasm. He hails from. Yeah. He hails from. All right. Baltimore. <laughs> you can't. You gotta be serious the whole time, though. I don't. I don't have those. I don't have those sway kind of interviews. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> coming all the way from Lexington Market. <laughs> <laughs> My main man, poet deep. <laughs> Not from Lexington Market, man. Yeah, Lexington. He might have been. He could have that. He could have. <laughs> he was getting some vegan food. No. Oh yeah. And they, I heard yeah. they got some good spots down there too. Lexington Down Market, market yeah. Oh, I wouldn't know yeah. about that either. But um, again, welcome to Baltimore Flavor Radio, man. I'm I'm glad we finally got the chance to pull you in. Yes, sir. Um, like we were saying earlier, man, I had the opportunity to meet you. It was my birthday, so back in December, we were at the um a, a homeless event that Shaw Lady Heron yeah, was feed at. the homeless. Yeah, I think it was around like December the fourth. It was. It like was my that. birthday. It was December the fourth, oh. the day that the Ravens was putting foot up in the Dolphins. Yeah, because I was close. 
No, yeah. I wasn't. It wasn't cold that day at all. Yeah. I was out there with just a yeah, hoodie and watch sports. sports that so day. I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, everybody come on. Everybody come on. Okay. Uh, well, everybody at the same. Yeah. Damn. You can. Yeah, but not everybody. Just those two. Swing, I knew what you meant. Hold on, we're gonna we're gonna make a switch real quick. Switch, switch. Now put All right. back on them over that way. Yeah, we got it. Go ahead, keep going. So um, right. you know, we we chopped it up a little bit, man, and and Shaw had you basically to to come out, um, and and talk about pretty much a lot of things that was going on in the city, man. And mm-hmm. um, I was like, yo, this this brother, you know, it, it, he's really got it. He he, he really understands. You know what's going on in the in the city. What's going on in this community, man? Um, before we even get into what you're doing musically, man, give us a a, a quick take on how you feel about what's going on in the city now, as far as the the violence, as far as the homelessness, as far as the politics and everything else that's going on. Well, from how I understand society, that um, if if, if, if there's a, a class of people or a race of people to remain dominant over other people, then there must be an orchestrated or systematic form of keeping them disadvan- to disadvantaged and disenfranchised. So what I see is of uh, no surprise to me. Mm. Um, how I feel, um, how I feel is that um, as a man, we have a duty to do what we're supposed to do. And when we're not doing what we're supposed to do, there are other people that's going to do yeah. what they're supposed to do. So at the end of the day, we just have to deal with the odds like that. That's that's just how I feel, you know. But um, I'm also involved. I'm also engaged myself um, with the people. But I, but what we're going through, you know, um, as a people collectively, it's bigger than us. It's bigger than all of us. So the way how I always have to um, ha- have to look at it is that. Um, when we do not have control over our resources or utilizing them properly and things like that, we are always going to have way, uh, wars waged against us, whether it's in the educational sector, whether it's in the health sector, any sector that you want to uh, speak of because of our lack of resources and things like that and understanding what it really means to attain power. So with that being said, um, it comes natural with the territory, and this is something that has been going on for years, and it will continue to go on until we get it, or we continue to suffer. So, so where do you think the the solution starts? I think the solution starts is first of all is understanding what power really is. I think we have a great confusion as a people about what it means to have power. I think. Um, so, give us your definition mm-hmm. of power. When you control your institutions that govern the basic necessities of your life, when you are able to control your food, when you are able to control your financing, when you are able to define and organize your education, uh, health, whereas these things come from deriving from your culture and understanding how it relates to you. And, and, And the reason why I'm saying it this way is because we're so used to being taught, like, we go to school to get an education, mm-hmm. but no one really truly asks the education to do what? To go get a good job, right? Right, And even if you run a business, mm-hmm. if you don't have the necessary uh, political understanding, your education is really supposed to supp- uh, uh, solve the problems of your people, of your community. If your education does not do that for you, then that's not an education. If it does not equip you with the tools and the skills to be able to solve the problems that you see. So if it's about violence, like prime example, I, you know, I hear many people, well, you know, why are these young people killing like this? And why we ask all of these different whys. But if we look, if we could study into uh, sociology, we could be able to see all of that stuff plain and clear is that when you have a society where people are not always aware about resources that are uh, are available uh, to them and when they have negative images um, presented towards them about themselves always and then, you know, not only that, but the the brokenness that we have in our families, our family structures are not intact. What do you expect these people to be? 
Not saying that people cannot aspire to be better, but as a majority basis, what do you really expect for these people to actually be when this is what's presented to them? A lot of people don't know, like you have a lot of people that want to start small businesses. They don't know that you can actually find small business grants. A lot of people don't know that there's uh, minority grants to be able to go to college. There's a lot of things that we do not know that we Absolutely. can get a lot of our creativity and ideas off of the ground, but it's not something to present to us. But what is? Destruction. Foulness. That is something that we can readily see easily. But something that is productive, something that help us to grow and develop our character. No, that's not something that we just see in front of our face all the time. So, 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 what role do you think the media plays in that? Because destruction, yeah. <clears throat> for the most part. Don't get me wrong. Um, you can find some things that the media will show you that's interesting, and that can allow certain people to explore things that they haven't um, seen before, but on a majority basis, no, it's not about the business of that because the thing is to keep people in consumer mode, to always keep us in need, to always feel like we are lacking something. So we always need to buy something. We always need to change something. We always need to rearrange. But And, and while we're always trying to get right, our community is going wrong because different people use different means to get right. Right. So if you out there on the streets, you robbing and you banging your gun, you killing to get right. If you work in a job, you working overtime, but never able to get a hit to get right. Because everybody, we're, we're taught, <coughs> I believe that we're taught that we must be a certain way um, in a society, you know, about what's made popular. And I believe it's the media that set, that set these standards, in my opinion. Prime example. Um, I don't watch Steve Harvey show. One day I was um, um, I was taking a urinalysis for a job, right? And I just sat and watched the Steve Harvey show. And I know that his show has very high ratings, right? And there was a woman who they was asked if she had $100 million, what would she do with it? She said that she would give some of her money to poor people. This is what Steve Harvey said, right? He said what he was taught or what his father told him is the only thing that you could do for poor people is not be one. And that was the mm -hmm. final conclusion of that point. That's what the applause came behind and all of that, right? So you think about how many million people see that. Mm -hmm. What impression does that have on certain people's minds when they see stuff like that? Mm -hmm. Is this is what you do to the poor? Because other nationalities didn't do that to their people when they came over not here in America. Not at all. Yeah. Not at all. <laughs> so. I've always, always say that... Um, other race are taught to work the system, and we are taught to stay behind the system. True. I agree. Because, um, prime example, like, uh, they know a lot more than we know. Pretty much a person uh, from another country mm -hmm. gets paid to come here mm -hmm. while we pay to live here. Right. Hmm. Never you know that. what I wanted to add to that? The add a spin is back in the 17, 1800s, when our ancestors were, were coming out of slavery, mm -hmm. right? When we look at, um, you know, more people know about Black Wall Street now, but there have yeah. been other different um, black independent communities who did very good business. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us are not connected to that experience where we actually knew how to build our own economy, how to be able to sustain our own economy. But we were warred upon by white America and the government as well. And so now what has happened ever since the drug era, it has tore our youth away for those roots about how we got here and the blood that was shed for us to be who we are today. We've been totally disconnected from yeah. that. And I think that's probably been one of the worst things in the modern day that has been done to us as a people. How do you feel about uh, schools not, not too many schools teaching black history, Mike? Like black history, period. Black history, period, yeah. <clears throat> How do I feel about it? Yeah. Well, like, like I said, if, 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 if you are to be in a consumer mindset, to be outside yourself, it's necessary for them to teach you that way. Your enemy should never teach you into power. Why, mm -hmm. why should they? And it's funny you mentioned Black Wall Street because if you mention that to most people today, the first thing they're going to talk about is the game, <laughs> the, the rapper, the game, and yeah. his Black Wall Street label. But let me ask you this, um, yes, sir. Yeah, cause we, so we can kind of segue into your music. Um, you talked about the, the role that you feel like the media plays um, as an artist. What role do you feel 
the music that is being pretty much pounded and pounded and pounded into our people's head these days. What role do you think that plays? Because the one thing I noticed is that you're a fan of a modal technique, which already makes you all right with me, because that's mm -hmm. my dude. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> and so, so knowing how he is, I kind of know where this answer is going to go, but what uh, role do you think the music is playing? Well, the music is a very important fact, because um, me and, and my belief, I believe that everything possesses spirit. Everything. And I know a lot of artists don't recognize this, but everything possesses spirit. I used to be in the streets, so nobody mm -hmm. from the streets, you can't tell me anything, right. right? I know about where my mind used to be and different things that I became open to doing because of listening to that music. So I, it has a vibration to it. And mm -hmm. so I do believe that, you know, someone who's always inundated with destructive music starts mm -hmm. to become a destructive person in certain aspects in their life. Not saying all aspects of their personhood is negative just because they listen to a certain type of right. music that glorifies nonsense, but it plays a role. Why? Because the young, the young, the young boys out there, when they hear this stuff and when they see that stuff, and you can see it, you can see it. They want to pick up guns. They want to see how it feels to kill somebody. They want to, they want to know what the feeling like because it's the, it's, 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 it becomes, what's the logical conclusion of being a gangster? Mm -hmm. You know, like, what's the logical conclusion of this? You know, so the thing is, to me, is all thing possesses energy and vibration. And, and, and us as human beings, there's a lot of things that influences our behavior, whether we understand it or not, yeah. whether it's for the better or the worse. And, you know, you play destructive music. I believe, you know, for the most part, you're going to get destructive people, primarily our children, who don't know the difference. So with that being said, uh, what can we expect when we listen to Poet Deep on the music level? Constructive music, my, my journey into manhood, me still learning how to be a man, um, understanding the importance of leadership in my family. I have a wife and five children. Um, it's, just, it's, just, it's just my journey, my journey of health, how I used to drink alcohol, smoke marijuana. People used to know me for not being a sober person. And, you know, now, you know, like I was a raw vegan for six years. I just started eating cooked food. So it's just me breaking down my journey and how I understand, understand things now from a cultural point of view and just learning how to be more progressive. That's, that's what people are going to get from me. So what, what was the turnaround for you when you were, um, when you were doing all of those negative things? What, what point in your life uh, just kind of happened that made you say it's time for me to make a change as a man? Obviously, having you know a family yeah. was played this a before, role. Yeah, no, okay. this before I even had a family. Mm -hmm. um, there was a there was a time in my life where, as though my pain was too great, I was suicidal. Um, I was paranoid a lot about being killed. I had attempts on my life. Mm -hmm. And one thing about me is, when I was younger, I was given the ability from my family to always be able to reflect on myself. And I think I used to deal with more pain than the average street person because I could be inside of a circle and like, you in a circle right now. And I knew it and I did not know how to explain it. I didn't know how to get out of it. I just knew, like, I could just find, you know, just like a lot of stupid stuff that I, yeah. I would do. And it is just like, it just keep bothering me and thank you bothering me say, you keep going down this road, you're dead or you're in prison. You understand what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Just like when I was 18. I was arrested for attempted murder. I was found not guilty. I was able to come back home, get my life together. You know, I've been arrested on other times, but and then it's like, even when I used to be in jail, I always used to be very reflective on guys, guys that, you know, I would talk to. And it's like, they've been getting up, getting locked up for murders like for 10 years. And it's like, mm -hmm. you can't live, there's no life like this. What you really want out of life and what I really wanted for myself, it wasn't in the streets. I just didn't, know how to work a better alternative at the time because of me always, I mean, for me, intoxicating my mind and things like that. And so I had to learn how to, you know, start dealing with self more. Okay. So um, what made you decide to, to just go ahead and pick up the pen and, and expressing yourself that way? Well, I've been doing this now for 19 years. Okay. So, I mean, I've always been dealing with the pen, you know, okay. always. So that, that wasn't something that just came, you know. And, and other than Immortal Technique, who influences you with your music? The Moses, K. Reno. Okay. 
And yeah. for those of us that don't know who K Reno is, K Reno is a legend from um, Houston, Texas. Okay. He's been rapping since 1983. He just dropped seven albums on one day mm -hmm. in September. He has All right, like Tupac. he's like 30. He's like 37 albums deep in the game. Wow. And almost anything that you want to think about humanly possible. He raps about it. He's a great storyteller. He's a monster lyricist. I mean, whatever you want to do, he'll go there for you. And he's he's pushing his fifties. And he and he's talking about he don't want to stop. <laughs> I'm just at all. Every time I, listen I just to learned him. something new tonight. I need to go check this dude out, K Reno. Yes, sir. Yeah, I definitely need to check that out too myself. <laughs> you don't know him either. No. Yeah, I, I don't feel nah, bad. Nah. Of course, Diamond knows him because Diamond, yeah, Diamond knows, knows everybody. everybody. So, um, Diamond probably DJ for him. <laughs> <laughs> at the last supper. No, I'm just <laughs> so, um, you sent us two joints in today. Yes, um, sir. Tell, tell us a little bit about these songs we're going to get into. All right. Well, the first one is People Under Siege. It's a single, um, that's actually on my EP. I just released my EP like three weeks ago. Okay. And uh, basically, People Under Siege is really self explanatory. It's basically what we've been, what talking, we've been talking about. about exactly. You know, just us being the people, you know, uh, uh, under siege. But it's also motivation as well. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to fight this off. And the other track is called Activated. And most of the song Activated is talking about how we function in our dysfunction in a zombie like state. Mm -hmm. And so basically, it's, it's, it's just talking about, you know, the, 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 the paralysis of awareness that we have in society. Mm -hmm. But towards the end of the song, it's kind of like I kind of tuned you up, fixed you up, and then you activated. Oh, okay. So that's basically the concept of that. Now, I, I like that. Now I say um, it was like a discussion. I think it was on like Facebook or something. But um, people was like, somebody said people, the, the average consumer these days don't pay for bars. Mm. They don't pay for bars. They pay for more of a beat and, and, a, hook. and a hook. How do you That's feel facts. about that as I, an artist that put a lot into your, your music and your I, talent? I think, I, think it's, I think it's some great truth to it. I can't speak all because there's like a lot of different independent circuits, and I don't have you know, all the statistics on how people listen, but it would seem that way you know, um, sometimes that you know, it's definitely about the beat and the catchy, you know I mean, the catchy hook. You know what I mean? Rather than the actual substance, like people who are really talking about something, take your mind for a journey. But, you know, I've, I've heard, you know, um, I heard J. Cole have done well. Mm -hmm. You know, Kendrick have, 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 done, have done well, you know. I know they have, you know, some substance in, in what they're saying. So, you know, um, I'm grateful for that. But as an artist, knowing this, when you go through your creative process, um, how do you make sure that that listener gets some kind of substance out of what it is that they're listening to other than the beat and the hook? Well, me, I just always make sure I have something to say because different people catch different things mm -hmm. that I say. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, so to me, it's, 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 I never could be too sure on which one. I just make right. sure I pack it with so many nutrients. Right. When you take a bite, you know, you got something to <laughs> I like that. I like that one, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's... that's <laughs> I don't know which one you might get, you know what I mean? Right. Some people like, like, I change up my delivery sometimes on different songs. Mm -hmm. Some people are more inclined to listen to that. Some people like, yo, just keep it regular, you know what I'm saying? I like yeah. it I like it when you just set it straight out. <laughs> so, you know, different people have their different, you know, their different likes, so. And how, how is the, the, the difference between being a poet versus being an MC? Well, really, I actually do more as an MC rather than a poet. Mm -hmm. I was given the name Poet Deep from rapping. Okay. You know, and the person saw it as it was like it was poetry and a rap. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So I, I took on the name about near fifteen years ago. So pretty much, you know, um there's not really much a difference. I do write poems mm -hmm. but I don't really showcase them. Like anybody who ever seen me perform at a show or anywhere, like I'm always rapping. So what, what was the original name before you switched over? Man, I was young, man. I think I called, what I call myself? <laughs> Dawn, that other nigga. <laughs> That's what I used to call. <laughs> I'm like 15, so. <laughs> That's <Yo>. the first one. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, but now, I mean, when you think about it now, you look at some of these names of these artists, it's, it's like, it's it's within that bracket. Like, I, yeah, I seen. Yeah, little or young. 
pretty much. Yeah, that's what it is. The dawn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, man. We're going to get into this music, man, and then we'll be back with more Poet Deep. This is Baltimore Flavor Radio, radioonfire.com. Dot com, com, com. com. 